Hey everybody and welcome back to Live Between Paychecks Kitchen. I'm Oz, Jack and Later still in Lake Jackson. And this was coming from my little guy in the kitchen and I, I warned you that everybody kept asking for it so I was going to have to do it and I can't stand I know it's divisive but I throw through spam. <laughs> and I've, I think I found a way to do it. I'm going to try it. Oh, I get goosebumps just talking about it. Oh Lord, we're going to do some spam or luncheon meat or whatever you want to call it, chopped ham. I got three different kinds here. We're going to try it out. Before we get into it, be sure to like, share, subscribe. Do the YouTube stuff, get the uh, bell over in this corner here, get notifications. We do these as close as possible to Tuesdays and Fridays. Also, there's a link down the YouTube for our merch. We've got spoons, spatulas, flippers, my apron that I'm not wearing, I'll have to find in a second. <laughs> and let's just get into the food. Enough talking, right? Like, let's, let's, yeah, I can talk over the food. Well, can you call it food? It's spam. Ooh. All right, like any of these things that work, like the traditional spam, that's fine. I'm part of that 90s generation that quote unquote rediscovered Money Python, and we're the reason they're spam folders. It does have an expiration date, but it's many years away. There's also luncheon loaf, chopped ham. This is the HEB, but it's low sodium, so it's kind of my favorite go to. But uh, yeah, uh, any of these will work. Uh, they're all pretty much the same thing. They all have the same can. I guess it's just brand recognition from the original spam stuff. If you're going to fry it, you're going to need a little bit of oil, okay? Or you can use butter. If you want to make your spam fancy with butter or olive oil, feel free. But it's still spam. You're going to need a nice sharp knife or just a blunt piece of metal. I'm going to use this, this tater cutter here if you want to do that. That usually helps out a little bit. And uh, also, you can use an air fryer. I'm going to show you both ways to do this with air fryer and with the oil in a skillet. So that's it. You can season with whatever you want or nothing at all. Uh, so first things first, you need to open this. Uh, it's got a pull tab on it. I remember the old keys that go around the outside of it. So that's a little weird. Yeah, like it just kind of hooked on a little piece of metal and pull it open. Uh, yeah, it's got the same smell and it made Zool come running in here. Uh, it won't come out. Uh, <laughs> one of the tricks to this is if you squeeze the side, sometimes it'll work. But if not, you can get your nice sharp knife. Again, shout out to Andy. I'm sorry I'm going to do this to the knife in front of you here. But go ahead and take it and just give it a little poke hole. Boop, right in the top. And that'll break the seal on the bottom of that meat and it falls right out. So uh, keep the cans. It's got a little bit of mystery jelly. Just go hose that out with hot water. Maybe a little bit of soap. It's up to you. I'm going to show you what to do with those later. Uh, Wash your hands, but your hands are going to get greasy, dirty doing this anyway. So for the chips, get you a nice sharp knife go on this flat edge and just cut it as thin as you dare. Uh, if you want thicker ones, that's fine. Just takes a little longer. The thinner they are, the more you get uh, and the faster they cook. So that is completely up to you. Just go ahead and cut down this whole can of, uh, this is the traditional spam, with a nice sharp knife. Get you a nice plate of this. All right, set it down. Be sure to wipe off your knife and your cutting board because you just had raw chopped meats on it mechanically separated some people say that means it's been run over by a buick so uh <laughs> once you get that done now you do the fries i want to show you how to do this go ahead and pop this up this is the heb low sodium stuff i really are a bigger fan of this mostly just because my doc yells at me over sodium so again squeeze the sides a little bit sometimes it'll come out sometimes it won't just get you, you know, like an ice pick is what i think my grandfather used when i was a kid well whatever so just just a little jab and viola it's uh, it's meat but you can still see that a lot of mystery gel in that one i still haven't figured out what the hell that is i'm guessing it's some kind of fatty stuff but again just wash it out and we're going to come back to that later so this isn't going to be too big to put through our potato press here our french fry press so we're just going to go ahead and take it and slice it in half which is better because you don't have the stuff that hangs up in the uh, the cutter very much because you can push it through with the second piece. So go ahead and cut that in half. Stand it up right there. These usually are nice and sharp so you don't have to hold it too much. And then the lid just comes down, pushes out the bottom. But because it's all stuck together at the top, it doesn't all come out as fries. Uh, there's a lot of trial and error on this. Uh, shaking them, they come out. They're pretty good. you got to be kind of gentle with the fries side because it's just meat that's been pressed together. So it'll come loose. See how it's kind of hung up in there whatever? And see, that's it because the top gets all smooshed on the top and doesn't get pushed all the way through because the, the cutter isn't near as tight. So you put the second part, it'll help push some of the last of that through and little bitty smaller fries like little broken off fries you always get it like the fast food places that's what it's going to make here like get it bang on it see that's the remnants of the last one and then the new one is still hanging from the top best way i'm going to do it is get a spoon reach in there scrape it all down so now you got both of these you can put both of these in the air fryer so we're going to do that one first okay so you got it nice and done so we're going to get our air fryer we're going to set it at 350 okay 
Uh, I don't ever preheat. So I've heard some recipes that say, hey, preheat it, whatever. Uh, just go ahead and put a single layer down here. Don't double them up. Now, be careful if you do these really, really thin because it's a fan that blows the heat down down to these, right? It'll be so strong, it'll start blowing the, the <laughs> chips around and they'll stack up and cook. So you got to keep an eye on that. Uh, so I'm going to put them in there for five minutes. We can check them, see the color starting to change. And it's still hot because I'm an idiot. I'm going to grab it with my hand twice. <laughs> Now, remember, uh, you want it a little darker here. Um, I'm not much on the chewy stuff, especially if I'm going to make chips out of it. So this is at 8 minutes. You can kind of see where it's starting to get darker. And I still grab it by my hand because I'm still stupid. Uh, apparently, 3 minutes isn't enough time to change my mind on what's hot or not. You can see the color changing here. You want to go a little darker, a little bit browner, and a little crisper. So get your secret weapon, which is a plate with a paper towel on it. And go ahead and just pull those out and set them right on there. Now, if you want to season these, now's the time to do it. Where still warm and the grease is still on the outside because that holds all that seasoning to it. So these fries are the same thing but you can be a little heavier with them. Uh, mostly I think because these are cut a little thicker they don't blow around as much and because they don't take as much space the, uh, the heat can go in the air can go through them a lot better so you can kind of stack them up fairly well but like, I could probably do this whole set but I want to save some for the skillet see how they kind of stacked up. Just kind of make sure it's not completely gobbed up because they will stick to each other as they cook. Again 350. Now this time I went ahead and did 10 minutes i'm going to go ahead and stop it at eight and check it and you can see how thick these are i don't want them super hard because they are thinner and easier to cook and i don't want them like crunchy and stuff you can put them in there for the whole 10 and they do pretty good i just turned it off it's just really good so again if you want to season these this is the time to do it now go ahead and pull these out now i got these here now i my favorite go-to seasonings at right now are the heb uh, garlic uh pepper and then the and then the uh, HEB curry powder. Yeah, I, I don't know why. It's just something I'm really into later, but it turns out really, really well. So go ahead and put these on here, and those are ready to serve. Don't add any other salt. It's going to be too much. Now, if you want to fry them, if you don't have an air fryer, let's get into that. Just get you a skillet. Put it on about medium, medium high. I put mine as five out of nine. Go ahead and just give a little bit of oil. This last little bit was a little too much, but I'll get to that later. So go ahead and get that on there and let it start heating up. You don't have to wait until it gets big and bubbly or whatever. You're just going to get little bubbles around the side. Remember, you don't want it to spatter. You just want it to bubble. So if it starts spattering and spitting all over the place, go ahead and turn your heat down. Go ahead and fill those up as best you can. Keep an eye on them. Uh, it's best to use tongs, but you can use a fork or your hand if you're tough. Don't do that. <laughs> but tongs are best. Uh, again, kick them about 8 to 10 minutes. You can see how dark these got. Those turned out really well. Uh, again, they got a little bit of give to them because I don't want them like, straight crispy. I'm not a big fan of crunchy stuff. Again, got my plate and paper towel, my secret weapon. Go ahead and pull those out. And then now's the time to season them. We'll go ahead and hit this with the uh, the, the garlic pepper here. Uh, it's, it's really a good thing. It's a lot better than salt. And you still get that garlic stuff and the pepper, which is always a go-to. So the fries the same way. Just be very careful splashing them into the grease. That's why everybody is always careful about the... Uh, the fries at your local fast food joint be very careful now these are a little piled up they will separate and if you want to just go ahead and separate them yourself again eight to ten minutes these are good to go it's up to you how hot your you know, your skillet is and, and how hard your uh, your oven gets those, or your stovetop gets that hot and your altitude apparently in time of year so i went ahead and hit these with just a little bit of the uh the curry powder but that's it these are super simple now get these cans clean them out put some paper towels in them and you can use them for display which is very cool uh that's what i was going to tell you to do with those uh you can do the chips in it you can do the fries here i got a couple pictures uh the chips turned out really well mostly because i was able to season them and i just it's just the taste of uh, the spam stuff i'm just not a fan of it but this worked out really really well and uh so I just couldn't help but just dig this. It was just too easy. Uh, the fries and stuff worked out really well, and I ended up putting it on a salad as well. So that's the thing that happened. I was able to take it, thin slice it, put it on uh, the, my salad, and eat it down. These hold up really well. We put them in like a Ziploc bag, put them in a fridge or whatever, because they are meat. Be very careful. Uh, they're not healthy, especially even if you get the low-sodium stuff. There's still a lot of sodium in these. So be very, very careful with these. But for snacks, you want to do something fancy with this. Uh, the little cup thing, that's absolutely fine. Uh, the the salad worked out well. <laughs> Zool loved them. People have just been eating them uh, straight up. I got a friend of mine that wants me to try it with uh, peanut butter on a English muffin. So 
That might be a little shorter one over on TikTok, but this worked out really well. I, th I thank everybody for asking it. Like I said, I don't try to yuck your yum. If you're into spam, that is awesome. I'm glad to cook it. I was actually able to try this one. It turned out really well. Thank you very much. And let me know if you try this, if it's new to you, man, if you're not a fan of spam, uh, let me know. And there you have it, folks. Spam, both chips and fries and on a salad. I'm still getting chills because I was able to eat it. So I don't know if it's the, the salt content making me have chills or whatever. But again, a big strong shout out to HEB for letting us get all our stuff there that's very cool not sponsored that's just where we go just no recipes just vibes but if you want to do it differently you do it differently you want to see me do it differently put it down in the comments that's what they're there for put it down in the comedy comments right and then let me know or you can find us on social media and tell me how horrible i did and facebook pinterest patreon with all those that live between paychecks kitchen you can also find us on instagram short it down over there to just living between that's cool you can find me Oswe nerdy on all of those including over on twitter and on tiktok but i'm generally just talking nerd stuff action figures comics miniature painting 3d printing larping whatever <laughs> hit us up over there tell us what to do i've done a couple of these because let's face it like people have given us recipes but we have over 400 on here so please dig around find some more let me know what you use and send us some pictures i would love that i'm just gonna let y'all get back into it i'm gonna go eat more salad y'all be good i gotta try the one with the peanut butter stuff i didn't i didn't forget you i'm gonna do it but lord have mercy all right y'all be good